I tried making a mod for Hollow Knight, and it was tougher than I thought. <laughs> Look at this, stupid idiot, you can't even reach me. Wait, no, no! So in this video, I will discuss why I did it, how I did it, and what big mistakes were made. Over the past few years, I've been using a program called Unity, which is a game engine that allows you to, well, make games. One day I thought, since Hollow Knight is made in Unity, could I make a mod for it? I mean, it shouldn't be too hard, right? <laughs> right? So I dove headfirst into learning all I could about Hollow Knight modding. Here's where the first big problem came. I'm used to the large amount of extensive tutorials about Unity development, which make learning much easier. Huh? Unfortunately, the Hollow Knight modding scene doesn't have this luxury. There's a modding discord, some documentation, and a few tutorials, which... Well, it actually isn't a lot in total. So I watched the tutorials, used the resources in the discord and the documentation, started making a mod, and gave up for a year. What happened? Before I explain that, let's discuss what my mod was supposed to be. I wasn't trying to make a huge content mod, just a simple mod that would spawn in an image of a car every time you press the O button. So why did it fail? When you're working in Unity, you get a whole user interface that makes everything much easier to see and use. But with modding, you have to do everything with code. Working at a lower level was quite new and confusing for me, and I had no idea how to do what I wanted to do. Although I did figure out how to swap text in the game with whatever I wanted to say, which is why I was able to make the D's Nuts mod. Flash forward a year later, and I randomly had motivation to try again. And this time, I was able to do it. So, how did I do it? Well, luckily, in that time, another Hall Not modder by the name of Absolute Stratos made a tutorial. Like me, they also seemed to struggle their way through modding, but unlike me, they actually made something. More specifically, a mod called Fart Knight, which <coughs> just makes you fart. What did you expect? Anyways, this tutorial covered how to make a game object, which is exactly what I needed to know. So, how does this all work? Basically, I want to create a prefab, which is an object that can be easily copied and pasted throughout the game. For example, the eventual spirit is, well, I at least assume, a prefab. Whenever you use the spell, the spirit prefab is copied and then pasted into the scene. Theoretically, I can make a prefab of the car and then just copy paste it wherever I wanted to. This is when the second hurdle came in. Usually, I would just use a sprite renderer, which is a component I can add to the prefab that allows an image to be displayed. There was just one big problem. The sprite renderer refused to exist. All the other components I added worked fine, except for the sprite renderer, and I'm still not entirely sure why. I'd assume it's because Team Cherry used some asset package called 2K2D, which is supposed to make it easier to deal with 2D spreads and animations, but yeah, in this instance it just made it harder. Anyway, I tried just removing the sprite renderer, and it made the object appear as pink squares. It wasn't great, but it was progress. So in order to fix the sprite renderer issue, I had to make an animation of just one frame using 2K2D. But this led me to the final and biggest hurdle. For some reason, everything appeared as a red question mark. And while it was fun to play with, it was also very frustrating. Why was this happening? At first, I assumed the texture that I wanted to load was just not loading properly, and the question mark was a default sprite from 2K2D. So I looked it up, but unfortunately, 2K2D also isn't super well documented, or at least for working on a low level it isn't, and I couldn't find any references to this question mark, so it was back to the drawing board. I made sure to check my code several times with the Fortnite tutorial to see if there's something I missed, but there wasn't. I even used the same textures from the tutorial, but it didn't work. Eventually, I was so desperate that I did the unthinkable. I asked for help. I know. I didn't do everything on my own. I betrayed the Sigma males of our society. I asked for help on the modding discord, and yeah, we still didn't figure it out. So I tried using several different debugging techniques that I picked up over the years, like putting logging statements everywhere. Because of this, I was able to narrow it down to the line of code that was in charge of loading the texture. I just had no idea why this was failing. And what was weird is if it failed to load, the texture should be a null value, but it wasn't. Turns out, there was a bug with the version of Unity that Hollow Knight used, where if it failed to load the texture, it would just use this default question mark image and lie by saying, Um, actually, the texture loaded properly? Because of course it did that. So now I knew this image came from Unity, not 2K2D. But why would it fail? I searched the web, eventually becoming more familiar with texture formats. Perhaps I was onto something. If the texture format of the images I was using wasn't supported, it wouldn't load, right? So I asked in the modding discord, but then found out that I actually wasn't close at all. But then, everything changed. Some gigachaz descended from the gamer heavens and solved my problem. A user named Ruddy asked, Do you have your image as an embedded resource? This question gave me the knowledge that images needed to be an embedded resource. Wait, what on earth is an embedded resource? Yeah, I don't know, but if you open the properties menu from the view tab and set your images to embedded resource, things work. From then, I was able to completely fix- wait. No, no, what on earth is happening? Okay, now it's fixed. 
Except for the fact that everything is small with wonky hitboxes. Okay, it's a little better now. Although I should probably just- Nope, nope, they're all going through the floor now. Okay. Finally. It's all good now. After two days of trying to figure this out, I fixed it. I have brought Lightning McQueen to Hollow Knight. Now, not only am I at total peace, but the entire world is at peace. That's right. After only three years of the Earth's existence, world peace has been achieved. It, oh, look at that. World hunger is over too. So are all natural disasters, war, and subscription-based models. All evil fled the Earth thanks to this ready person. Oh yeah, and another user named Bad Magic helped too, except he was just slightly slower than ready. But why stop there? Let's fight some bosses. Alright, let's just spawn a bunch of these. Let's see if it works. Alright, go, 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 go. Uh-oh. Uh, no, no. Oh, uh, no. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Okay. So as it turns out, spawning physics-based objects that can collide with enemies completely breaks them. Yay. <laughs> Look at this. Stupid idiot. He can't even reach me. Wait, no, no. But what if more Lightning McQueen spawned every time I swung the nail? This could potentially add some new challenge to bosses. So I added it in and fought against the Watcher Knights. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, 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 okay, I'm safe. Wait, no, 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 okay. Uh, 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 uh okay, I'm, no, no, I'm getting out of here. Both this mod and the D's Nuts mod I mentioned earlier will be available to download on the Scarab and Lumofly launchers. And if you want to get better at the game, be sure to watch this video where I rank what I think the 10 best charms in the game are.